Australia Junior. Finally, it stopped raining enough for us to clean up this garden. It's still pretty wet though, and there's so many leaves on the ground. Pia, Romeo. Costa, we're glad you made it. My backyard is a mess. Nothing the Gardening Australia Junior crew can't handle. Here's a rake. Um, Costa, is that you? Uh, what do you mean? Who we? I smell it too. I don't think it's Costa. I've got some compost in my pockets, but it doesn't usually smell, even though it's made out of decomposed scraps and cow dung. Whoa! The smell is getting worse. I think it's coming from near that tree stump. Aha! There's the smelly sauce. Tomato or barbecue? Not that kind of sauce. I mean, I've spotted the stinky culprit. It loves growing in moist conditions like this. Is that a mushroom? Close. It's a type of fungi. He doesn't smell like a very fun guy. <laughs> Good one. This little fella's name is, wait for it, a stinkhorn. <laughs> that name seems fair. Why do some plants stink so bad? A fungus isn't technically a plant. Fungi are their own thing. And by the way, you should never ever touch mushrooms or fungi in the garden. They can be really dangerous. Luckily, this stinkhorn isn't toxic. And even though it's pretty big, I reckon it could use a little bit of my compost. Whoa, Costa! That compost seems super strong. Whoa! Everything is growing really fast. What is happening? A sprinkle here, a sprinkle there makes the real world disappear. All it touches will grow tall, and you will seem so very small. That leaf is the size of my bed. <gasps> and check out the stinkhorn. It's grown as tall as a lighthouse. Usually, a stinkhorn can only grow as tall as a drink bottle. But this one is super-sized thanks to my compost. Impressive, huh? I don't know if compost should be that powerful. All compost helps gardens grow, but mine is magic and it makes everything enormous. But we're still the same size. I'm glad my nostrils didn't grow. The stinkhorn is even stinkier up close. <laughs> I've sprinkled the compost on the stuff around us so that we can get a close-up view to help answer your question, Romeo. Why do some plants stink? OK, well, it's hurting my neck looking up at this thing. It looks a bit like a rocket. Stinkhorns can grow into a bunch of different shapes, but the most common shape is this one. It has a long, thick stalk with a cone-shaped cap. I wish I could see the top. What's that sound? Is it a helicopter? A fighter jet? Think more along the lines of living flyers. <gasps> Is it a beehive? Not bees. Here they come. It's a swarm of some sort of super shiny, googly-eyed flying fly? They're blowflies. They find the smell of stinkhorns irresistible. Ugh. And there are three of them. One for each of us. I'm good. I don't want a gigantic pet blowfly. I have a goldfish at home and I love it very much. Come on, Romeo. The compost wears off after a few minutes and in the meantime, we can ride these blowflies to the top of the stinkhorn. I'm calling mine Fazza. Fine. Mine's Bev. Beautiful. I'll name mine Brucey. All aboard! Hey, it's easy to climb up their legs. And you can hold on to the spiky hairs on their body so you don't fall off. I'm glad I've got my gardening gloves on. Ready, steady, lift off! Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> the magic compost and super-sized flies almost made me forget about that smell. The stench is actually very similar to rotting meat. Blowflies love rotten meat. They lay their eggs in it. Double eel! <laughs> hey, race you to the top. 
Full steam ahead, Bev. <laughs> Come on, Baz, we can beat them. Too late. Bruce is speedier than both of you. Time to land. Wait, is Bev about to lay eggs here? No, this is a trick that the Stinkhorn is playing. A trick? Bazza doesn't like tricksters, do you, Baz? You'll see what I mean. I'm going to jump off Brucey's back for a closer look. We're coming to. Ugh, gross. The top of this stinkhorn is covered in gooey green slime. Yep, it's called Gleba. And my feet are stuck in it. You'll be right, you won't sink. What are these little dotty bits in the slime? They're spores. You wouldn't be able to see them without a microscope if this stinkhorn was its regular size. What's a spore for? They're kind of like fungi's version of seeds. When they spread around the garden, they grow into new fungi. Ah! Romeo, get your blowfly under control. Bev just tried to lick me. Relax. She's slurping up the gleba. Ew, Bev. Don't drink the slime. It's got spores in it. Exactly. The stinkhorn wants the blowflies to suck up the slime. It tastes like sugar to Bev, Baz and Brucey. And now I'm off sugar. It's all part of the trick. The stinkhorn lures the blowflies over with the scent of rotting meat. Again. Gross. They think they're flying over here to lay their eggs, but then they land and find this sweet, sugary, spore-filled slime drink. Baz, stop. This slurping is seriously grossing me out. When they're done, the flies buzz off to a new spot and poop out the stinkhorn spores. Ah, so new stinkhorns grow from the spores in the blowflies. Poop. You got it. And that's why some plants and fungi reek. Because they're using the smell to attract Bev, Baza and Brucey to help them spread their spores? Or seeds or pollen. It depends on the plant. And it's not always blowflies. They might be trying to attract bees, wasps, moths, whichever creature likes their scent. Well, one thing's for sure. This smell does not attract me. It also works like that. Some plants and fungi waft out bad smells to deter pests. Now that is smart. I might spray some funky perfume around my bedroom door to keep my little brother away. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with Bev. She's not buzzing as loudly. Oops. Time to go. The compost is about to wear off. Baza, quick, over here. Let's go, Bev. Time for takeoff, Brucey. <gasps> Bev is getting smaller. Bev is too. Here comes the ground. That's better. Hmm, but we still have these piles of leaves to rake up, and that smell is still lingering. I have an idea to give our schnozzers a little break. <laughs> Welcome to Costa's Perfumery. We're going to make our very own signature scents. Ooh, fancy. You need one cup of water. Check. One cup of ripped up flower petals, herbs or fruit peels. Don't pick anything without permission. Fallen petals are the best. Got it. You also need a clean, empty container. Here's one. And this is the tricky bit of equipment, a strainer. It needs to have small holes like a sieve. Oh, yeah, we have one of those in our kitchen cupboard. We use it when we're baking. Perfect. Now, what you want to do is add your smelly plant pieces like flower petals, herbs or fruit peels into the water. That's done. Then you let it sit overnight. We can't wait that long. It's OK. Here's a batch I made earlier. We should have known he'd be prepared. He carries magic compost in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Then you pour the mixture through the sieve and into the fresh container. The sieve is catching the chunky plant pieces. That's what it's designed for. Now, smell. <laughs> Smells like lemons. With a hint of mint. Homemade perfume. Let's call it Mintamon. I guess it's a better name than Stinkhorn. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I will not be sharing my magic compost recipe. Please do not sprinkle any compost, magic or not, on anything except soil. In fact, don't sprinkle compost anywhere without the help of a grown-up. You never know what magic might happen. If you like the Gardening Australia Junior podcast, make sure you check out the TV show too. You'll find us on ABC iView.